Welcome back to Computer Science 340. In this video, we're going to carry on what we were talking about last time with heaps. Now we're going to start actually writing the code to set up the tree structure in an array like we talked about and put in those left to right and parent methods. And then we're going to write code to insert new values into the heap. And we'll have to talk about the algorithm for doing that. And also in this video, we'll cover the algorithm for removing data from the heap. And remember with the heap, we always take the biggest value out and return it back and also remove it from the data structure. So we'll talk about both of those algorithms and how they work, and then we'll go ahead and implement them with Java code too. So let's go ahead and start by setting up a class to hold the data inside of the array in the tree structure. Okay, let's start by talking about this skeleton program here that has a basic implementation of what we talked about last time. Here we have a class storing an array of integers, and it also keeps track of how many numbers are in there. Inside of the constructor, we initialize the array to be an empty array of the given size that the user passed in. Then we have these methods for navigating the tree. Remember, we're storing the tree inside of this array. And so instead of following links, to different nodes to get to the left and right children, we're going to use these methods. So these methods each take in the index of the node. So like if we pass in zero, that'll be the root node. And then this method returns the left child of the given node. This one passes the right child and this one returns the parent. Then we have empty method stubs for inserting and dequeuing from the heap. We have a method to return the largest item in case you want to just like peek at what the biggest item remaining is, which is always at the root of the tree in slot zero of our array, a method to get how many items are in there, and then one that just prints out the array. This will just be for testing mostly. Then in the main method down here, we make a heap that can store up to 100 numbers, put some data in, and then print the results with calling just this print method. And so when we do this, we'll be able to see what our heap looks like when we're done. So the next thing we need to talk about is this insert method. How is this going to be implemented? And first we'll move to the whiteboard to talk about like logically how the algorithm is going to work. And then we'll come back here and write the code for it. All right, so here we have a heap drawn out. And remember the heap rules are that for every node, the two children of that node have to have a lesser value. So 92 has 87 and 75, those are less. 31 has 26 and 11, those are less and so on. That makes this a max heap. Remember, of course, we could do it all the way other way around, which would make it a min heap. So the way that we're going to do this insert process is we want to put new data into the tree, but we need to make sure we obey both rules. We have to make sure that we obey the perfectly balanced and left aligned rule. And we also have to make sure we obey the value rule. So we can't just go ahead and stick new data down here, for instance, because then it wouldn't be perfectly balanced. Likewise, we couldn't stick it over here because then it would not be left aligned. So when we do the insert, we're going to make sure we obey this rule first, and we're going to stick the new value into the slot that it should go to, to keep it balanced and left aligned first. So no matter what number we put in, we're going to put it into this slot right here. Then we go ahead and put in the number. And in some cases, like if the number is less than 14, that would be the end of the story. But most of the time, that's not going to be the case. So let's say we put in a new value like 86. Well, now we have the balance and left aligned rule being satisfied, but we have this problem because 86 is in fact greater than 14. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called upheaping, and we're going to upheap this value 86, which basically means just swap it around with its parent. So here I would swap the 86 and the 14 around like this. And so now we've fixed one problem because now the 14 isn't above the 86 any longer, but we still have another problem because 86 is still less than its parent, which is the 75. And so we need to upheap again and swap the 86 and the 75 this time, which leaves us looking like this. And now everything is good because 86 is in fact less than its parent 92 here. So that's the basic algorithm here. Let me go ahead and write it up. So we go ahead and insert the value at the next available slot, whether it really makes sense to put it there or not. And then while it's bigger than its parent, we upheap it, swapping it with its parent value. Let's do it one more time with another value just so we can see how it'll work. Now let's say we wanna insert the value 100. Again, we don't just like go right to the top and put it there, even though we know it has to eventually end up as 
the root because it is the biggest value. Instead, we start by putting it in the next available slot as the left child of 50, and it's kind of hard to tell that that's the left child because there's not much room, but that's the left child of 50. Then once it's there, we have this problem where it is bigger than its parent, so we do this swap thing. We're gonna swap one time, which gets us looking like this. We're still not done, we swap it again, which gets us to this position, and now we're still not done, so we swap it one more time, which gets us here, and now we're done. We have to make sure that we don't try to get the parent of the root node and check if it's greater than that, because there is no parent. Once we get to the root, we're done, regardless of, of what the value is. So let's go ahead and turn back to the Java code and actually implement this thing. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put this item in the next available slot. Now we have this variable count that is keeping track of how many nodes are currently in there. And so if we have zero nodes, count will be zero. And so we'll want to put it, the next thing into slot zero. If we have three items, count will be three. And we want to put the next one into slot three because zero, one, and two are taken. So we want to put it in count as our index. So I'll say array at count is equal to this item. That's actually putting the data into the array that we need. Then what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of which node we're currently looking at, which is the count node. So again, if this is the first item, then count is going to be zero. And so the node that we just inserted is in slot zero. Otherwise, if we just put something in slot seven, node is equal to seven. This is like an index into the array at the thing we're looking at. We're gonna to need to keep track of that. We also need to keep track of the parent node, which I can get by calling the handy parent method that we wrote last time. So if I pass the index of where we just put something, it'll return to me the parent back. And then I need to do count plus plus to make sure that we do that bookkeeping so we keep track of how many items we have. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to do the upheaping part. So we need to upheap this thing until either it's the root node, like we talked about, or its parent is bigger because we're doing a max heap here. So I'm gonna say while the node doesn't equal zero, because if the node equals zero, that means it's in the root position. And then we have to stop upheaping because the thing we have, no matter how big it is, it's gotten as high as it can go because it's in the root position. So while it's not the root, and also while its value array at the node index, while it's bigger than the array at the parent index. So basically we're saying, while the thing isn't the root and it still needs to be upheaped because its value is bigger than that of its parent, then we're gonna go ahead and swap it with its parent. So to do that, we're going to swap the values first. And to do that, I need a temporary variable. So I'll say int temp equals array at this node. Then I'll say the array at this node location is equal to the array at the parent location. And then finally, the array at the parent location is equal to the temporary variable. That just goes ahead and swaps the two numbers from the array cells like we talked about. Then the next thing to do is to update our indices because now the node that we're looking at, the one we just inserted, isn't in the node slot anymore, it's in the parent slot. So node is equal to the parent node. And P now we have to get by calling parent of node again. So wherever we put the value that we inserted after the swap, we need to find the parent of that node, which is now the node's parent. So we're just basically going up the tree. And I think that is all that needs to be done for this. We went ahead and implemented the algorithm we talked about on the whiteboard. So before we go to DQ, let's go ahead and test this. So if I print out the heap, it's going to print it out in order, which remember we can then go ahead and figure out which nodes are the parent of which by drawing it out. So let's go ahead and see how this set of numbers got inserted into our heap. Okay, so here's what it prints out, 99, 32, all the way to 19. Let's draw that and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. I uh, just copied it over here so that we can look at both at the same time. And so now I need to keep track of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes, it looks like. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is what it looks like, how many cells we have. And then we just put them in from top to bottom, left to right, like we talked about. So the root is 99. And then we have 32, 64, 
28, 6, 42, 54, 7, and 19. It looks like this is the resulting heap that got generated. And it looks like this is correct, right? Even though we put them in in sort of random order, it maintained the heap properties because 99 is bigger than both its kids. And it looks like that's true for all of the other nodes as well. So it looks like this insert method is working correctly. Now we need to talk about the remove method, the DQ method. So let's talk about how that's going to work. All right, so I went back to this bigger tree so that we can talk about this DQ method. Now, what we need to have happen is we need to have this 100 removed from the tray because that's the value that we're taking out. We always take out the biggest item in the max heap. But of course, that is in a way sort of the hardest one to remove because it's, it's the root that's holding the whole thing together. And we need to make sure that it stays also balanced and left aligned. So the one that we like structurally want to remove is this one over here the one that's on the rightmost side of the bottom level. And so what we're going to do to fix this is we're going to remove this one structurally from the tray, and we're going to take the 50 that we don't want to remove, and we're going to put it up into the root of the tray. And so the first step is to do that. We've gotten rid of the node that box that was down here. And so structurally that one's gone. So it's still perfectly balanced and left aligned. But of course we couldn't delete the value that was there, the 50. So we fix that by making it the new root of the tray. And we'll set aside the 100 so that we can return it at the end of this method. But in terms of the tree, the 100 is now gone. It's been overwritten. But of course we're not done there yet because we have this problem where now it doesn't follow the heap rules anymore. We have a node 50 and we have it being less than both of its children when the max heap rule says that the 50 has to be greater than both of its children. And so we're going to fix this by what's called down heaping, like the alternative thing of up heaping that we talked about for the insert. And so now what we have to do is we have to heap 50 down the tree into a spot where it fixes this issue. And so we're again going to do this by swapping, except now we're going to swap with one of the children. And so if you think about it, we can't just pick either one of the children, because if we pick the 87 here and swap that with the 50, then we'll have fixed 50 being bigger than one of its children, but the 87 then would be the parent of 92, which is itself a problem. So we have to swap the 50 with the bigger of the two children. So in this case, that means swapping 50 with the 92, which leaves us looking like this. And now we will want to do that again, of course, because 50 is still bigger than one or both of its children. So now we need to swap the 50 with, again, the bigger of its two children, which in this case is the 86. And that's going to leave us looking like this. And so now at this point, we're done because the 50, it's not less than either of its children because that doesn't have any children. And so at this point, we can say we're done. Okay, so here it is written out as pseudocode. We first start by setting aside the root value to return. Then we move the last child on top of the root value. Then we do this down heaping. While that node has at least one child with a bigger value, we swap it with its biggest child and keep doing that until there is no child with a bigger value. And then we return the original root value back again. So let's do this one more time to see how it'll work. The first thing we do is we set aside the 92 inside of a temporary variable like that so that we can return it later. Then we move the last child on top of the root. In this case, that's the 14 node. I didn't say this in the instructions, but we're also going to have to remove this node itself down here. And with our array-based implementation, we're basically going to do that just by doing count minus minus and subtracting one from count. So that's going to go ahead and get rid of this box here, essentially, which will leave it looking like this. And now we have to do this down heaping loop. So while the node is less than at least one of its children, we swap it with the biggest child. So in this case, that'll mean swapping the 14 with the 87, which will put us into this position. Then we need to swap the 14 with its biggest child, which in this case is the 42, which gets us here. And then we'll need to do this one more time, swapping the 14 with the 23, which gets us looking like this. And now finally, the 14 is in a position where it doesn't have any children that are bigger than it, and so we can stop. Sometimes it didn't happen in either of these cases, but sometimes it might happen that we don't have to downheap all the way down to the bottom level. Okay, and then the last thing we do is return the original value of this 92 here, which we can then pass back to whoever called DQ. 
So let's go back to the code then and put in this method. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to set aside the root value to return. And I'll say something like int uh, return value equals array at slot zero. Again, because that's the root node is in slot zero. So we set that aside. Then the next thing we need to do is to move last value to the root. Again, we're taking the one on the very rightmost of the bottom level, which is going to be our very end of the array and the way we've set it up. So I'm going to set the array in slot zero equal to the array at count minus one. Count minus one is going to be our last cell. And so we're going to pull that very last one and put it on top of the root. Then we'll do count minus minus to, again, sort of like indicate that that last node has now been removed. Now we need to find the children nodes because those are going to be important for checking if the left and right children have bigger values than the node we're currently on. So I guess first, actually, I'll say int node equals zero. Just like before, we need to keep track of what node we're currently looking at. This is the one that's being downheaped. Then we need to keep track of L, which will be the left of child of this node, and R, which is the right child of this node. And that's so we can write something like this, where we say, while one child is bigger than us, because we need to, to know which are the left and right children in order to do that. We also need to see if there is a left and right child. And so the left and right child um, methods return numbers. So they return where the left and right children would be laid out in the array, but those that doesn't necessarily mean that those are valid indices. So I need to say something like, while L is less than count, meaning it's valid, and the value stored in that cell, so array at L, while that's greater than the array value at this node itself. So while that's true, or let's write it down here, the other way around, the right node is valid and the value at that right node, while well, that's greater than or equal to our node. So let's think about this logic real quick and just make sure that that captures it. So here we have this loop here that says, while there is a left node and the left node is bigger than our node, or the right node is valid, the right child is valid, and it has a value bigger than our node. So while one of those things is true, we need to go ahead and do this down heaping. Now we need to find the bigger of the two things. So I'm going to use an index called max to refer to the index of the node, which has the bigger value between L and R. So I'll say find biggest child. And now we have a couple of different cases, actually, because it could be that we have two children, or it could be that we only have one child. So I'll say something like if both children are valid. So if L is less than count, and also R is less than count, then we need to see which of these two things is bigger. So then I'll say if the array at L is bigger than the array at R, if I can get the right letter, then that means L is bigger, so I'm going to say max is equal to L. Otherwise, max is equal to R. So that's if we have two valid children. Otherwise, if we only have one valid child, well, first of all, we know in that case it has to be the left child that's valid because this thing has to be left aligned. It's impossible for a node to have only a right child. So in that case, I'll say else max is equal to L. So that finds our biggest child. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the swap with the biggest child. So again, to do the swap, we need a temporary variable. So I'll say int temp equals the array at this node. Then the array at this node is equal to its biggest child, array at max, whether that's on the left or the right. Then we're going to say array at max is equal to the temporary variable, which was the node. That swaps them around. 
then we need to update our indices just like before so that we can carry on the down heap on the next iteration. So now our node that we're looking at has been swapped with the biggest child, which is in slot max, max is the index. Then again, we need to update the left and right indices. So L is equal to the left of this new node, the child, and R is equal to the right of this new node, which is the child. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. There's sort of a lot of bookkeeping that this method is having to do. And so just coming up and writing this code from start to finish would have been hard, but I think that it's doing exactly the things that we came up with on the whiteboard about what had to happen. So let's go ahead and test this and see if it's working. I'll go ahead and make some changes to this method right here. All right. So now while the heap has data in it, we just call the DQ method. And so if we think about it, what should happen when we run this program, if our DQ is working correctly, is it should print out the 99 first, then the 64, then the 54, and carry on all the way down to the seven and then the six. It should print them out in descending order if it always takes the biggest one each time. So let's see if it does in fact do that. Okay, so I'll compile it and see that there's actually an error in the code that I wrote. So let me come back up here. We forgot to do one thing, which is to return the biggest value. So after we're done the down heaping operation, we need to return the original root from this, which is in our return value variable. So I'll say return ret value, I called it. Now that should fix the compiler error. And then we can go ahead and run heap example and see that it does do this. It does print them in descending order. So it looks like our DQ method is working here. Now there's one last thing to talk about real quick, which is the analysis of these things. I promised sort of at the beginning or said anyway, that the insert and the DQ would both be big O of log N. And hopefully it should make some sense why that's the case. If we go ahead and insert something new into this heap, well, we stick it into the next open slot, regardless of what the value is. Let's say we put a big one, like 92, then we up heap it. And so sticking it in the next available slot is a constant time operation. It's the upheaping that actually has a loop involved. And so the question is how many times can we upheap something in this tree? And because this tree has to be perfectly balanced, we've already talked about sort of the relationship between the height of a binary tree and the number of nodes in it. And it's this exponential relationship. For every level of the tree you add, you double the amount of space that can be stored in the tree. You double the amount of values. And so conversely, if you have n items in a tree, the tree has log base 2n many levels. And so for that reason, the insert here is big O of log n, like we talked about because your limiting factor is the height of the tree and the height of a tree of n items is log base two of n when it's perfectly balanced. And the same thing is true of the DQ method. If I was gonna DQ this 87, I swap it with the nine value. And so we would get rid of this and put a nine here and get rid of this node in the tree. And then we have to DQ nine. And the question is how far down the tree could the nine go? And the answer is the height of the tree, which again is log base two of n. And so this is log n as well. The actual things we do of setting aside the root value, doing the swap, doing the return are all constant time operations. The only loop in our DQ method is this down heaping loop, which can only go log n times. And so that's the analysis for these things. The heap is really, really efficient if this is the problem you're trying to solve, where you wanna keep track of items, adding items as you go, and constantly take out the biggest or the smallest item. So that's really all there is for heaps. The notes page here has info on the algorithms and the code that we came up with to do these insertions and deletions. Heaps are a really nice sort of very efficient and also sort of hopefully rather intuitive and elegant data structure. The way they work and the way they guarantee their performance, I think is pretty, is pretty neat. And again, if you're trying to implement this like priority queue idea, the heap is the best structure to do that. Heaps also have another interesting property, which is that they serve to sort data. So if you want to sort data in descending order, one way of doing that is loading all that data into a heap and then just DQ all the data back out again, and you'll get it in descending order if it's a max heap. 
Likewise, if you want to sort data in ascending order, you could use a min heap. So there's a sorting algorithm called heap sort that is basically just that. And that's what your lab is going to be about. If you have any questions about heaps, please just let me know. Okay. Thanks.